freedom. Oh, freedom. And who has not longed for the day when every yoke shall be broken and the oppressed go free? Illinois Anti-Slavery Convention, 1837. In the 1830s, the proponents of abolition became more vocal and tensions grew between pro-slavery and anti-slavery factions. Abolitionists formed societies, established newspapers, aided runaway slaves, battled the courts, and sought political power. Considered radical by the majority of the population, they were met with fierce and often violent opposition. Illinois College in Jacksonville was a center of the abolitionist movement in Illinois. President Edward Beecher, brother of Harriet Beecher Stowe, author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, was an outspoken opponent of slavery who helped organize the Illinois State Anti-Slavery Society in 1837. Professor Jonathan Turner helped three black women to freedom. Student Samuel Willard was prosecuted and fined for attempting to free an escaped slave. Other students were indicted for harboring runaway slaves, and two houses near the college are believed to have been part of the Underground Railroad. Founded in 1837, Galesburg and Knox College were significant hubs of abolitionist and Underground Railroad activity in West Central Illinois. The Knox College founding document called the Circular and Plan opposed slavery and declared that the college would be accessible to students regardless of their financial means and regardless of their race. A lot of those abolitionists, not, not all, but a lot of them were, what do you think? They were young people. They were students. There's a couple colleges here in Illinois, Illinois College in Jacksonville and Knox College up in Galesburg, where there were this, these these student activists. We think of the student activists of the 1960s, right? Well, there were student activists. There's probably always student activists, right? Because the students are stepping up. So that's something that, that you guys need to think about and keep in mind that, you know, you're empowered to affect change. You see an injustice, you can do just what the student activists at Jackson, at Illinois College in Jacksonville did. Um, what they did up in, at uh, Knox College in Galesburg, Illinois. So the students Students can affect change. You may not think so, but it really can, it really can happen. So, so Jenkins is, is proof of, of a community, someone in a community, stepping up, taking a leadership role, and, and affecting change, helping where they could at great risk. Make no mistake, this was risky business for someone to help someone else escape. And, and they could lose their property. They could be jailed. They could be fined. Um, Jenkins, he was, a, he was a husband and a father. He had a family to support, but he saw the injustice and he acted. He had a brother-in-law, James Blanks, who was an advocate, a strong advocate in Springfield for equal opportunity for, of education for African Americans. They had fundraisers, they wrote petitions so that um, African American students had the same opportunities as any other students for education because people saw the power in education. Some advocated for it, some feared it. You know, uh, with education, as I say, com comes great power, great potential. So we often focus on the right to vote as a freedom in the struggle, but there are so many levels of that. Or even more importantly, local African Americans gathering in this room to strategize for educational rights. They were being taxed to pay for schools but they were not allowed to send their children to schools and they had to petition the legislature in order to try to achieve that educational right and they were denied. So that struggle would have to continue. You know, we talked about Uncle Tom's Cabin before and again, that book was really popular in the North because it was opening people's minds. You know, and I'm, I'm so thankful to think back about the people who were living in the North who read that book and were then open to doing something different that might change society because they realized that they hadn't seen what was going on before maybe or they hadn't understood just how bad slavery as a way of life was. Remember 
when we started, what did we start talking about here at the table? We were trying to define Slavery. Yeah. Is it easy? No. It's not, is it? Everyone has their own definition. It's kind of hard to define sometimes. Anybody else? If you want to live like Lincoln, anybody else? Got to think smart. Go ahead, say it again. You said you got to think smart. You got to think smart. That's good advice, Willie. <laughs> You've got to try to think smart. Know your, opponent. know your opponent. Wow. Boy, that's that's really important. You want to say anything more about that? Like, like if he's your rival and you know, like, you already, I don't know this point, like, you got to think smarter than your, like, I don't know how to explain it. Well, let's, let's unwind that then a little bit for a second. Is there anybody at the table who could help define the word rival for me. What you're up against. What you're up against. Notice he didn't even say who. So sometimes it's not always a person, right? Yes, yeah, a problem. Or a yeah. problem. Well, I'm really proud that you didn't define the word rivalry another way because there's a lot of young people who are defining it in a much less desirable terms, terms that are much harsher. In fact, I've, I've heard a lot of students come in to our historic sites and museums and they happen to define it, the word rival, with only one other word. Can you guess it? Enemy. 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 That's right. And that certainly for some is acceptable. But when you define your rival as an enemy, the, the opportunity that you might be able to work together later on goes way down. So knowing who your rivals are is extremely important. But to be plain, you are dissatisfied with me about the Negro. Quite likely, there is a difference of opinion between you and myself on that subject. I certainly wish that all men could be free. Well, I suppose you do not. Abraham Lincoln, 1863. Mm -hmm.